And then the main event, Bianca Belair and Sasha for the SmackDown Women's title. There were moments of sloppiness in this match, but I really enjoyed this match. Bianca did some awesome stuff. She did a... She lift... So Sasha goes for this dive. Bianca catches her and hoists her up into a suplex. She walks all the way up the steps... She's press slamming her and walking up the While steps. She's, yeah, she press slammed her and then threw her into the ring. That was really impressive. The and walking up the steps while holding her was, was that was real impressive. I mean, I keep thinking like, um, I mean, between, I mean, I mean, Sasha is very light, but still you're, I mean, like walking around with her. Okay, that was impressive, but walking up the steps, that was so impressive. Well, you're not only walking up the steps, but you have to balance holding her in press slam position. I know, that's what I mean. Not even if you're like holding her like a baby or throwing her over your shoulder or something, but like pressing her over the head, keeping the balance, and walking up the steps. Like, has any, I don't think I've even seen a guy do that one. That was very impressive. I mean, like, I've seen, what was this? I've seen, I have seen guys do the suplex and then walk up the steps. I have seen that. So, but I think this has got to be, because from a balance standpoint, is this hard? This would be harder, wouldn't it? I actually think that holding somebody in a vertical suplex and walking up the steps would actually be harder. Okay. All right. Because at least on the press slam, your your opponent can like balance, they can kind of post on your shoulders. Whereas in a vertical suplex, I mean, you know, it's, it's you've seen people hold the, the delayed vertical suplex. And, you know, they do it standing still, and they're still... Well, she did that, too. Well, yeah, but she walked... I mean, walking up the steps while holding someone in a vertical suplex position? I think that'd be harder, but who knows? Yeah. Running Shooting Star Press, 450s, all sorts of cool stuff. And uh, Sasha keeps using the hair. She grabs the hair. She uses the hair to use the bank statement. And finally, she tries to grab the hair one more time, and Bianca responds by whipping the hell out of her with her braid... And she does another counter, and she finally hits the KOD. She gets the pin, and Michael Cole screams, She kicked out! Yeah. And meanwhile, the music is playing, and they're raising Bianca's uh, arm, and I well, was like, oh my god. Well, What can you do? What can you do? Yeah, and, and this was a SmackDown match, so Michael Cole would have called it no matter what. I, at first, I thought, you know, they because Michael Cole did the whole show, which was not the plan, but Tom Phillips... Who may, who apparently may not be back. I don't know what the story is. I was trying to check all day, but everybody was so busy with the matches that I never really got an answer. Um, and people didn't know. I mean, the people who I talked with had no idea if there was going to be a change, but Tom Phillips, um, apparently, um, there was a, it was a COVID protocol issue for, um, tonight and then the story is is that on monday adnan vink from espn starts as the new announcer on raw i don't know that i mean that's that's the story going around i cannot say that 100 percent. hopefully tomorrow i'll have that confirmed but um but that that was the story and um so michael cole you know had to do the whole show and but he would have done this match either way and it is her finisher like as soon as she hit the finisher my thought was Okay, it is WrestleMania. It is the main event. It is possible she's going to kick out and beat her with the same move later. But most likely, this is the finish. And I don't know. I mean, it's like, I mean, it wasn't like Sasha kicked out late. You know what I mean? Like kicked out right after three. So I don't know what, what the deal was between that and that, that, that cradle finish, the, 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 um, Liv Morgan finish. You know, which wasn't Michael, that was Michael Cole's fault. He actually did that one. He, he had that one right, but. That was weird. You know, it's like, you you know, you rarely get those mistakes and you got two of them in the same show. All right, so for tomorrow's show, we've got Oscar and Rhea Ripley for the Raw Women's title. The Fiend versus Randy Orton in what is still, at this point, a professional wrestling match with no <sighs> stips. I got a feeling that this is going to be... <laughs> this is going to be something. I, you know, I mean... I'm, I, I have this feeling it's going to be a very polarizing match because there's some people who are going to, no matter how bad it is, are going to say it's good, and um, you know, and maybe it, maybe it will be good, but uh, I don't know with the Fiend's track record. I think what he's had Kevin Owens and he's had Daniel Bryan one one each maybe, yeah, and everything else has been pretty bad. Is that is that what it's been pretty much? That is what it has been. Yeah, we have Biggie versus Apollo Cruz in the Nigerian drum fight. Do you know what that is? 
Uh, well, they say that you hit each other, so it sounds like there's drums. Okay, but what does that mean? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, that's so, what so, they said. I mean, is there going to be more? So so should like... Um, should like Minoru Suzuki and Ishii be doing Nigerian drum matches? Should be like the they should, should they be like the specialists? In that? I guess. I mean, maybe they have to tell the crowd no talking so we can hear the the beating like a drum. Yeah, the Big Show could do like a Nigerian drum match too. Well, anyway, we got Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn with Logan Paul out there. Riddle versus Sheamus for the U.S. title. Shane and Nia versus Natty and Tamina and Roman Reigns, Edge, and Daniel Bryan for the Universal title. Yeah, well, main event's interesting because any one of the three could logically win. And there you go. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.